Can you give me an example of just showing whether it's someone waking up in the morning and they have back pain and oh, they're yeah, getting absolutely. a text? Oh yeah, yes, of course. Breaking or, Bad, <laughs> who's this horrible guy? He winds up being, you know, killing his his uh, uh, his uh, his uh, brother-in-law, who we don't mind seeing die, but but he winds up ruining his family entirely. Jesse, everybody. when we first see Walter White, and we'll actually first see him in his underwear in the desert, but then when we first see him at home waking up. He's waking up in this awful little bedroom with a terrible uh, nightstand from, from Ikea. He's got <laughs> uh, this crappy little exercise machine he gets up on, and the exercise machine's broken after about 10 seconds in one of those step things. And then the camera pans to the wall, and we see on the wall that in 1985, Walter White was in line for a Nobel Prize in physics and chemistry, right? And then we go back to him, and he said, and, and, and he's, he's dead. He's been, something's murdered him. What is it? Well, we find out much later what it is. He was betrayed. He was, he was uh, uh, betrayed by, by his partner, by his love. But he is, and then he goes and he slumps out and he's sitting at this breakfast table and it's his 50th birthday and he gets soy bacon for his birthday. <laughs> and then his wife goes, eat it. You'll like it. And then his son comes out and says, well, the water heater is not working. Well, just you got to get up early with the first shower. Why can't we buy a new water heater, right? Well, because Walter's a loser, right? So everything about Walter shows us that he's been horribly wounded by something. So what we're rooting for is for Walter to get better. And so when Walter becomes a badass, I don't know about you, but I'm on his side. I, I know he's killing innocent people. I don't care, Walter. Get him, get him. Stand, kill that guy. So that is a terrible part of the human soul, maybe. But it's the device by which we make a character sympathetic is to show their wounds. Because as human beings, we're not going to be interested in good-looking, perfect people who are making, making a lot of money and they're great and everything they do. Who gives a shit? We want to see people that we can identify with because that's not us. We've got problems, right? I've got problems, right? I want to see my problems and somebody else with problems dealing with problems, okay? And you can say, well, you know, a show like, um, like uh, Riverdale doesn't do that, but they do. And, and there's <laughs> fantasy shows, uh, absolutely fantasy shows where, where that's not the case. But most of the time, you do want to see a wound. That's what likability really means. Oh, they're like me. They're screwed up. They don't have it all together. Wish I did. Maybe they'll get it together, right? And then that means that then I'll get it together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how did they get it together, right? But mostly it's just, yeah, they're like me. You know, they're not perfect. They're not, uh, you know, they, they're, they're like me. Well, you've been using an acronym for a little bit. And what's funny is driving over, I was looking over the notes, and I think that David had said off camera that BMOC stands for Big Man on Campus in yeah, yeah, it does. the basketball world, which I was not yeah, privy yeah, to. Yeah. I did not know that. Oh, but really? for, for writing, oh, yeah. uh, what, what, what is your take on Beginning, this middle, obstacle, climax. That's what that stands for. Um, well, I, I found this out years ago, analyzing all movies, that the, it was an equal MC square moment for me. There are four crescendos in a movie where the hero is asked to change and asked to learn the theme of the movie and asked to learn how to heal. All the things I talk about, the big things I talk about, healing, learning the theme, um, stopping bleeding, all that. There's four times in a movie story, inevitably, that that happens at a crescendo. It's at 30 pages in, 60 pages in, 90 pages in, and about 108 pages in. Those I call the beginning, middle, obstacle, climax, the BMOC, right? Now that's a structure that is in every great movie practically you've ever seen. It's not in a Godard movie, okay? If you're writing a French wave movie, I'm sorry, I won't be able to help you. That's just a French guy peeing in an alley for two hours, and that's great, right? I love those movies, but, th but in, a, in, a, in a Hollywood film, um, that structure is invariably in the story, and if it's not, there's usually something missing. It'll be superseded someday, but that's what's operating now. Now, that BMOC operates in everything. Um, uh, every, every movie, uh, uh, Dunkirk, uh, um, in Deadpool, um, everything. But now, in Deadpool, let's just take an example. In Deadpool, which is a great movie, 
again, I'm big on wounds, right? What's our wound in the Deadpool? Well, the guy, well, he's wounded because he's ugly. He becomes extremely disfigured by a chemical bath, right? And because of his wound, I'm ugly, uh, he can't face his girl. He doesn't feel lovable. So the big crescendos, the BMOC points in that movie are, is he gonna have the, the balls or, or, or the courage to believe that his, his girl will love him even though he's ugly, okay? So what he's gotta learn in there to heal his wound is, I'm lovable. His wound is, I'm not lovable, right? And, and that's a wound we can all identify with. A lot, a lot of us think we're not lovable. Sure. So he's, his journey in Deadpool, the crescendos of the movie are, are you going to realize you're lovable? Well, the answer for, for him is uh, yes, no, 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 yes. Yes, no, no, yes. Because after he gets uh, uh, chemically uh, doused, he, he's too ugly. And it takes him most of the movie to get to where he can take his mask off. That's the climax, right? That's the final point, it takes the mask off. Now I use Deadpool, I could use a more highfalutin movie, but I want people to understand these, these, this pattern the BMOC works in every movie. Now you can say, wow, that's great, Peter, that's a tool, ah, so what? The tool will help you write your movie. You gotta figure out what your theme is, you gotta figure out what your character's wound is, and you have to figure out how they're gonna be healing it. That's it, those are the three things. So the BMOC does that. Now, the interesting thing is, a few years ago, I freaked out and nearly lost my shit because I thought, okay, God, movies are, they're gonna be over. Television is everything, oh my God. I, 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 I'm, I'm a movie guy, I, I don't know what to do. So I slowly, sort of tentatively, sort of like, okay, will this work, does this work? Oh, wait a minute, that works. Okay, that works, does the BMOC work? Well, the BMOC turns out to work in television as well. So this tool works in drama and in comedy and TV as well. Because why? Because what we wanna see in a story is a hero learning to heal, and even if he doesn't heal completely, because he doesn't in TV, he's still gonna go on a journey towards healing a little bit. The critical difference between film and television is in TV, the hero doesn't heal, but he heals a little bit, and then at the end he gets ripped open again. So every week he's gonna heal a little bit and then get ripped open again. Every week, 150 times. But the BMOC works at the exact same places in a television hour than it does in a movie. There's just an extra M <laughs> because there's an extra act. So let's take a four act television structure. The BMOC, it's B-M-M-O-C. The O-C, the obstacle point, is the point when it looks like the hero's gonna lose. And in a movie, this is right at the 90 page point. Let's take a movie, everybody knows Star Wars. Uh, Luke gets to the planet, the last rebel planet. Uh, uh, Darth has followed him there with a homing beacon. He's got a Death Star. He's gonna blow up the whole damn thing. There's nothing Luke can do about it. There's just a little few starfighters and he's got a Death Star. That's it, the movie's over. And then of course, what happens? says, hey, I stole the plans of the Death Star. There's a little hole you can fill a missile in if you really get close. And Luke, you can be the only one to get that missile in that hole if you use the force, not your computer. And so the obstacle point is all is lost. And the climax is Luke learns the theme of the story. Luke, will you use the force to rescue the princess and save the Republic? He puts his computer away. All the other starfighters used it. They couldn't get the missile in. He puts his computer away. He's learned. He hears Obi-Wan say, Luke, use the force, not the computer. And he puts the missile in the hole, climax. So the obstacle point is always lost. And the climax is, Luke, you did it. In Breaking Bad, the obstacle point is, He's making meth in the desert. Jesse comes back out with uh, uh, Crazy Eight and the other uh, criminal. They're gonna kill them both. Waltz in his underwear. He has no defense. He's gonna get shot and killed. But then he says, I'll teach you. I'll teach you how to cook. I'll teach you how to cook my recipe. And the guy goes, really? Yes. And they go in the RV and Walter throws poison into the thing, whoosh! And the climax is he kills them both and becomes the mass murderer he's gonna be for the next 150 episodes. So that's the climax. So the O and the C point, and I'm not explaining this well, I'm sorry, but it's in my lecture online. It's a complex little tool, but it works so great. It's like a little engine that works any 
television structure you want, just like it did in film. So what did I learn when I started learning about television? Everything I learned in movies works. Every element that I learned about in movies works in television. The structure's just a little more complicated, that's all.